All right, I was over at Mafia Sports Report about a week ago. Tommy, he had me rank the AFC quarterbacks top to bottom. It was really easy for me to get one and two, and the rest, you know, I had to dig in, really struggling to figure out who is after one and two. For me, I had Joe Burrow at number one and Josh Allen at number two. He got a little upset, you know? He's a Bills fan, so he was ringing his hanky, getting a little frustrated because he wanted me to say Allen was number one. And to me, it was real close. I'm about as big an Allen fan as they come, you know? I mean, he's not my... If he was a Finns fan, I'd probably be the number one guy. But as much as I love him, when I really looked into what Joe Burrow did and how he did it and what was around him, I had to just nudge him up past Josh Allen. And that's what I want to do today. I want to dig into the analytics to really show you. I did this last offseason with Joe Burrow. A lot of people are saying, ah, Joe Burrow, he kind of underachieved. Number one overall pick. What about, you know? And I did some real deep studying on a kid. I love the kid going into the draft. And I spent a lot of time showing this kid had an amazing season last year that was cut short. Did a little uh, uh, music video on his movement skills. So I'm going to do that again this year. Sands the, the music video. This real interesting stuff comes up. And I think by the end of it, you're going to realize just how amazing this kid is. But before I do that, I want usually I save this to the end. But I want to give a thank you to all you viewers for the subs, the likes, the comments especially. Without you, it wouldn't happen. But I also want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Ace Per Head, because without them, this show wouldn't happen. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, let's get right into it. Joe Burrow's base stats, you look at them and, you know, 520 attempts, 360 completions, 4,600 yards, which was sixth, 36 touchdowns, which was eighth, ints, 14, a little high, a little knock there, that was sixth, QBR of 40, uh, 54.3, game-winning touchdowns, three, ranked them about 10 to 12th, rushing attack supporting them, uh, 19th in attempts, 23 in yards, overall their passing game was 20th in volume, passing attempts, and production, 7th. So... If you look at the base stats, you're like, wow, this guy had you know a pretty good season. And the fact that he went to the Super Bowl certainly says he had a very good season. But special, you might not get that when you just look at these base stats. Clearly, if you watch the film and then you're a Cincy fan, you, you understand. But what I want to do here is get into the analytics parts. And you know, some people will say, ah, stats, stats. And I'm a film first guy, dude. I I really only got into the stats analytics stuff like recently. But what analytics does is takes vast amount of film, compresses them into stats. And if you take one stat or two stats, you could say, oh, he threw this many touchdowns. He's the best quarterback for the season. Oh, he won this many Super Bowls. He's the best quarterback of all time. And that's a sterile environment using stats. Analytics is a, taking more, many, many, many stats and creating a holistic look at a player and then using those stats to create an image. It's like a vague image. Instead of the film you see when you're watching, it kind of creates this, I guess, black and white version of it. And it never replaces film, but it really works well with it. But in a quick way, I mean, I can sit here and watch 20, 30 hours of film with you, but who's going to sit there and watch that? This is a way to distill things down, the film down, and that's what I'm going to try to do here. So we saw those base stats. You know, like I said, good, pretty good. But now, when we start looking at the underneath the hood part of what he did, you're clearly going to be like, this guy is really, really, really good. Or, as I said, the number one quarterback in 2021. So we're going to take a look at this graphic. Pass intent and actualization. Okay, intended air yards was 8.1. That ranked him 9th through 11th. Court air yards, 6.4, which was 5th. Yak, 22.70, which was 5th. Drops, 13th. Okay, so when we look at this, we see that 
The intent was, okay, we're dialing up a deep passing game. Ninth to 11th, that's, that's pretty vertical, okay? Top third of the league. But then the actual actualization, what was created, what actually happened was fifth best, top five most vertical offense in the league. And it's important because that's going to frame the rest of this stuff. Because Joe had to play in a highly vertical offense with very little protection and operate in a way that was pretty much unlike just about any other quarterback, especially any other young quarterback out there. Now, obviously we understand shorter, quicker means better protection and higher pass percentage. So now that we get the vertical passing game here, a deep vertical passing game, it adds a little bonus to what Joe does. Now, he got a lot of help, a lot of help from his receivers. He, they got the ball, and Joe got them there pretty deep, and then they just made serious, hey, fifth overall in the league. Now, a little mitigating factor is they were 13th in drops. So when you take away the 2270 from the Yak, Joe produced 2100 on his own, and, and then the Yak came in after. So it's a little bit of a mitigation to what you can say Joe Burrow did. Not tough. There's all the quarterbacks up there with much higher, but he did get help. And again, when we look into the pressure that's coming and we see the drops, we can see that this offense still has room to grow, which is kind of scary. All right, so here's the pressure. Now, Joe was blitzed 19th uh, most in the league, or I should say least in the league. Sack percentage, 8.9%. Fifth overall, sacks number one at 51. So, Joe Burrow, we know he was sacked into oblivion. We saw it in the playoffs. We saw it in the Super Bowl. It was mind-blowing the amount of sacks that he got. And when you see the sack percentage of 8.9%, that means just about one out of every 10 throws, he was sacked. And a little bit of this, you have to understand, is because they're going vertical. Now, blitz, though, was only 9 You'd figure that a heavy vertical offense with a youngish quarterback who's coming off an injury and not such a great offensive line would be blitzed heavy. But teams realized, teams realized that you didn't have to really blitz Joe to hit him and to get to him. And this even made the passing game a little more difficult because they could bring just four, get the pressure, hit him, beat him up, and still play coverage, and yet Joe still made hay. This is impressive. So here's some more pressure, okay? Stats. Pressure percentage, 24.5%, which was 14th in the league. Hurries, 19th. Hits, 12th. Bat, batted balls, 18th. And throwaways, 21st. So with throwaways, Joe wasn't like, oh my God, this pressure, I got to throw the ball again. No, he was hanging tough, remaining cool, very few bats considering all the pressure. You know, he's a pretty tall guy, but not, a, you know, super athletic like some of these guys, Mahomes and Herbert and Allen, they can just get out of the way. Joe, now, Joe is a lot more athletic than many give him credit for. Again, I said I did a music video on the kid because I was so impressed with what he was able to do. I think it was Cal Colin Cowherd that said, hey, he's not really that athletic. This guy was a lot more impressive. And I think if in his year three, if he could totally get that knee back and get that part of his game back up to 100%, it's going to be very, very dangerous for opposing defense. But still, he's not like these other guys. He's not the Mahomes Allen. So he was able to figure out what was going on, get the ball off quick, make that movement to get the ball away, not so he didn't bat it away or didn't have to throw it away, check down early, which is really impressive. But think about it, 24.5%. So he was getting sacked nearly one out of every 10 passes. And he was getting pressure one out of every four. He was getting hit 12th most in the league, and yet he was only hurried 19th. This guy was hanging in the pocket, remaining cool, assessing the situation, and delivering that football, and taking a beating along the way and getting up to do it again. This is an amazing thing. It talks about the physical toughness of Joe and also the mental toughness. 
And this is when you start dialing in this aspect of it, this is the superior part. This is the special part. This is the part that has me saying, this kid is a rare, rare player. And I got some more stuff that's going to really put the cherry on the top, highlight it, uh, shoot fireworks in the air, the whole thing. So, I, now you've, you've heard the whole rest of the stuff, okay? Number one in sacks. Number 12 in hits. Uh, one out of every 10 passes, uh, easy, I got one out of every four passes, he's getting pressure. Now, with all that we ha he has on him, look at these final two stats. Pre passing accuracy. Bad throw percentage, 10.7%. 33rd least in the league. On target percentage, 70.4. I mean, think about that. You've got two polar opposite stats, and he is in the highest level of positive in both of them. So you got a vertical offense, okay? Your throwing intention is deep. Your actualization is even deeper. You're getting sacked one out of 10 plays, pressured one out of every four, 12th most hits, and you're delivering the football. You're putting that ball out there, and you have the 33rd least bad throw percentage. So you're not getting rattled. And... There's 32 all the quarterbacks. There's only 32 teams, and he's 33rd. That is so impressive. But when you take the on-target percentage, I think it was like 82 point, I forgot to write down. It was like 82 point something percent on target. Number one. All this abuse, all this pressure that you've got to navigate, that you've got to deal with, and you're throwing the least bad balls by a long margin, and you're the most on target, getting the snot beat out of you, and staying consistent all the way through the Super Bowl. Very impressive. Now, this last little bit of stuff I want to throw in here, this, I, I already said cherry on top. I don't know. <laughs> it's the kazoo you're blowing at the end. Whatever. I talk about the Dolphins. They had 61% 12 personnel. Max protect, still can protect, but they, they were setting up the most conservative style offense you could possibly imagine. I mean, I don't think I've seen anything like this in the longest time. But the Bengals took the polar opposite approach again. They were in their nickel, three wides, 77% of the time with that poor line. And... They were 29th, 29th in play action and 27th in RPO. So there was, there was, they basically said, Joe, I know you're coming off a blown out knee, you know, but we're going vertical again. We're going to sit in a nickel. Protection ain't going to be so hot. And we're not going to give you any bailouts of cheap throws with RPOs, cheap reads. And we're not going to give you any cheap holes. So we're going to run the ball so much that we run our play action. That safety's coming up. There's going to be a hole in there. You're going to hit the big play. None of that, dude. Joe, listen, there's going to be lots of pressure. I need you to go through your reads. Make it happen. You're, you got to do it. And the kid did. And along the way, he's getting beat, 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 getting it up, doing it again, and doing it the best in the business. I think his uh, completion percentage was 70.4, and that looks all great. When you look at his, the over-completion percentage, number one as well, so he was expected to throw 64% in that offense. That, the, gen, the general quarterback was expected to throw 64. He threw 70. Six points over expectation while getting hammered and asked to carry it all in year two after coming out a destroyed knee. I mean, it's not just one ligament. He had Everything wrecked. There was like nothing left. They could have chopped that thing off and thrown her on the sideline. It's pretty much the same thing as what would have happened. He had her bounce back from. So he had to come off 13 games in, blown out knee, recovering all the offseason, got to get prepared for the new season, come in, do it all again, ask to carry the total load. And this is why I edged him out over Allen. Mahomes. The guy is so special. We know the whole angle thing, the movement. The guy is big. Dude, the guy is, dude, he's like 600. 
Uh, he's like uh, six foot two or six foot three, 230 pounds. The guy's jacked. He's like a bodybuilder. Herbert, he's six foot five, I think, or whatever it is. The guy runs like a deer. Allen, fast, six foot five, and a tank, 240 or whatever he is, 235. Joe doesn't have those assets, the mobility assets this season like the other guys. And normally he wouldn't have it either. I mean, he was compromised. The only way he was going to make hay was with his brain. This, this is why I had to put him number one. There was nothing cheap about what Joe Burrow did this year. He didn't throw short to get cheap percentage. He wasn't able to scramble. They didn't have a great offensive line. Everything around him was compromised to force him to win one way, to process, to read, stay cool, be tough, and be accurate. Joe nailed all of them. Now, I like Joe Burrow so much, and I think he could have a better, he could have that like 20-year career like Brady has. He started out quicker. He's got, it's, this is such a unique skill set. He is like Peyton Manning. He's not going Omaha, Omaha. But he's getting up there. He's doing a little movement. But he's processing everything and finding what to do. His IQ, his football IQ, football acumen and the mental aspects is so rare. It's a lot more difficult to do it that way. It's good because you're going to have a much longer career. You could, you know, than just a guy who can, who can run maybe and he throws okay. This is why Joe Burrow needs to be taken care of. This guy's a treasure. Bengals, they made it to the Super Bowl. And that's great. They got to take care of this kid. And they did. They brought people in to protect him. He, he can't keep going like this. It's going to be amazing, but he'll be like Achilles. Amazing and and end short, unless they protect him. And if they do, look out. I think this could be so. This kid could be is clearly going to be Hall of Fame if he stays healthy. And it's it's an amazing thing when you look at Herbert, who he's really starting to arc up there. And I, what they built around him this year is phenomenal. Mahomes, we already seen brilliance, unbelievable. It's good. He'll be able to show really what he's about without Tyreek this year. Exceptional. Uh, year for him to prove who he is. And then you got Allen. To me, Allen, without a doubt, is the best quarterback in the league as far as projection and ability because he hasn't even really reached his final point as far as I, football IQ. He's just getting it done. like, And he's got the body type to do it, but can I keep him healthy? What The abuse he took last year was insane. At least Andy Reid with all his fun ball protects Mahomes. Mahomes. So, but Joe Burrow, man, super special. Anyway, Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for staying to the end. As Kurt is saying, catch you next time. Be well. Bookies can earn hundreds to thousands of dollars from booking action with aceperhead.com.